Uh, so today's lesson will be devoted to uh, Julian's test. And uh, we'll discuss uh, the following question. Oops. Uh, again, assume that we are interested in some characteristic of uh, people in different places, not very, not very linguistic problem, but you can think about some psycholinguistic study. And uh, uh, just to make, just to discuss uh, some simple example, let us assume that the question we are interested in is stated in the following way. Uh, is it true uh, that, uh, for example, people in, uh, in St. Petersburg Are uh, taller than the uh, people in Moscow. Uh, so we have a research question like this. Um, don't ask me why, but probably I'm interested in the relation between some environmental features uh, and uh, physical, uh, uh, physiological properties of people, and uh, from some from some consideration, I assume that uh, people in Saint Petersburg are taller due to whatever reason, because of due to bad weather, uh, they are trying to be taller to be closer to sun, probably. And uh, I want to I want to answer this question. And uh, assume that uh, actually we will we will simplify this question a little bit, uh, and we will assume uh, for today's lesson we will assume that we know how uh, we know what is the average height of people in Moscow. So we assume that uh, that in Moscow government uh, conducted. The research that measured all, all, all citizens of Moscow, and we have exact value. Uh, so uh, let average uh, height uh, people in Moscow. Uh, equals to uh, one hundred twenty five centimeters uh, children group. Assume that we know this number for sure. And uh, we don't have uh, this kind of research in St. Petersburg. And we have to conduct some research in St. Petersburg, but we don't have uh, so much money as Moscow government. And we are a small research group located in St. Petersburg. And uh, we, can, uh, we can only do small scale, small scale studies. And what would you do in this case? What if you want to answer this question? How do you should measure the average height of people in Yes, how, how, how would you measure it? If you don't have enough money to measure every single. We need to make an analog, analogical uh, like, uh, um, group. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. We have to make a we have to make a sample. Uh, now we have we have a population of all uh, people in Saint Petersburg, and we have to make a sample from this population randomly. Assume that we can do it randomly, but in fact it is not non trivial problem. But assume that we can do it in this way, and uh, then uh, we measure every recruited uh, person. And uh, assume that we have some data like uh, we have data we have a sample uh, of people in census server and uh, there. Uh, heights of 125, 182, um, 91, and These five numbers. We only we only recruited only five people, but we are sure that these five people were recruited randomly from from the whole Saint Petersburg. Uh, now, uh, what can you do to answer this question? I have this data. How would you analyze it? It's possible the data three people are I mean, higher um, mm -hmm. than average height of, of most of people, and um, so we can compare it. But actually, I don't think that uh, we can uh, have some. Um, working hypothesis based on on the five people. Mm, yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. Again, we have a question like, uh, how many how many people is enough? Uh, but let us assume that we have only these numbers and nothing more, and let us try to to uh, at least at least let us try to do something with this number. Uh, yeah, you said that uh, among these numbers, uh, three are three are larger than one hundred twenty-five. One is equal. And one, one is equal. equal. Yes, and one is smaller. But uh, yeah, we can uh, we can we, we can do these comparisons. But also note that if we are interested in uh, average height, uh, then probably we can take into account not only the fact that some number is larger than another number. But also we can take into account on uh, the difference between these values. So we can uh, we can uh, account the average height of these five people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, and uh, again as we, as we discussed on the previous lesson, um, basically what we are what we are trying to do, uh, we are interested in population mean of people in Saint Petersburg. And uh, we can try to approximate, to estimate this, uh, this average height of people in St. Petersburg by this, uh, by uh, the corresponding sample average, sample mean. So let us find the sample mean. I will use calculator uh, because it's a very difficult mathematical question. And I can do it in my head. So, so we have this sample, and uh, we have sample mean. Uh, we have sample mean that is uh, 
I just calculate the average of all these five values. And according to my calculator, it is it is 140. And what next? Uh, can we conclude that people in St. Petersburg are taller than people in Moscow according to this research? At least we can conclude that people in our sample are taller, right? On average, the sample average is larger than uh, these values, 125. But uh, do we have enough data to, to claim something about people, people of sense Peter work? Why do you think that there is no not enough data? Um, I think that because uh, like the amounts are very different, uh, so um, maybe it would be more um, like uh, more rational if we compare and uh, some uh, analogical numbers of people. So like uh, one uh, person of people in Moscow and one person of people in Saint Petersburg. Uh, well, but we are interested not in one person people of Moscow, but all people of Moscow. And we just don't have enough people in St. Petersburg to make, make a similar group uh, because there are a lot of people in Moscow. So we can use coefficient, coefficient right? Um, what kind of coefficient? Note that, note that this average, if we, if we recruit more people, uh, basically we don't expect that average will increase or decrease because it isn't an average. Because in, in any case, you divide by the number of people that you uh, take into account. So yeah, basically uh, the fact that we have a lot of people in Moscow and only five people here is not so important. Um, it is in fact important that number five is in a sense small, but not compared to all people in all people in Moscow. The, the fact that we have a lot of people in Moscow doesn't uh, doesn't affect our reason. Just we just say that we we know this number, and actually this is the only thing that we are interested in. Now. Uh, so okay. So you don't believe you don't believe this. Uh, you, 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 you don't want to say that we have some conclusive uh, conclusive result, right, from, from these numbers. Yes. Okay. Do everybody agree? Okay. So this data is not enough. But let us uh, let us speculate a little bit. By the way, uh, are there any objections uh, anywhere in Zoom? At least they hear us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so. Yeah. We see that this number is larger than this number, but it is not enough. Let us let us pretend for a second that we obtained not these values but different values. So this was first first research, and we have another research. Uh, another results, another study. And in this study, we obtained the following values. The following five numbers uh, 210, 175, 250, 150, and 300. Uh, again, we have only five numbers, only five people. But uh, you can find an uh, average of, this, of these values. But just by looking at these numbers, uh, do you believe now that people in St. Petersburg are taller than people in Moscow? According to, to these numbers and according to this number, 
assume that this is real data. Yes, assume that. Okay, it is difficult to imagine. Uh, it is difficult to imagine uh, people uh, who are so so tall, but you can think not about not about height, but but about some other features. Assume that this is real data. So, uh, would you believe now uh, if I say that my research strongly suggests that people in Saint Petersburg are taller than people in Moscow who are who are only one hundred twenty-five? Um, actually, it uh, looks I think more convincing because the the the, the largest uh, number here is like um, if uh, somebody in Moscow was uh, first. Uh, three meters high then uh, there uh, should be another uh, one who uh, would have uh, like minus uh, mm -hmm. yeah. minus height yeah. and it is uh, like unbelievable mm -hmm. so maybe because of that but uh, mm -hmm. who knows so basically you are you think about the distribution uh, from which uh, these numbers are obtained and if you think that this distribution should be like something like normal distribution and um you make some conclusions from this yeah okay uh any other thoughts about this about this question like in this uh in this uh, sample and a sample uh, three um uh, three uh, numbers are noticeably larger than average uh, mm -hmm. like um, uh, height of um, any person. So maybe uh, we, we should compare not only the height in Moscow and St. Petersburg, but also in some like general height. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but let us uh, let us limit on the term only to this only to this numbers only to this, this data. Let us let us pretend that we know nothing about how people looks like and. Let us pretend that we are some alien alien researchers, mm -hmm. and this is the only uh, the only data that we have. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Let me uh, let me consider uh, another story. So, uh, so I'm 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 just collecting collecting your some data about your intuition. So basically, these results are not convincing. And uh, these results are more convincing. And uh, they are more convincing because we have large numbers. Okay. Uh, let me let me consider another study. And assume that in this study I have uh, the following values. Uh, these five values 130, 131, 130.5. 129.5 and 131. And what can you say now? Uh, how do you think? Is it, uh, is it a good evidence in favor of positive answer to this question? The average height in Moscow is 125. And uh, there are 25 numbers. Uh, let us compare with this uh, with this situation, which which is more convincing in the positive answer to this question. I think that the new one because the the variance is quite small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's a good idea. Note that. If I find average on these five values, I will get something near 130. So the difference between this value and this value uh, on one hand, and average of these numbers and this value 
On the other hand, um, so it is this delta, this difference is smaller here than here, right? But somehow these numbers are more convincing than these numbers. Everybody agree? Uh, so uh, this result is also more convincing than the first one. And now it is not due to large numbers because these numbers are on average smaller than these numbers. But this is due to small variance. So this is again more convincing um, than first study. And now this is due to small variance. So basically, if we see uh, these numbers, we have to assume that basically all people in St. Petersburg are produced on some kind of factory and they are almost, almost uh, of, equal, uh, of equal height, unlike people in, in, in this study. And so uh, this somehow provides us more information about uh, about, about the population of people in St. Petersburg today. Than this research. And uh, finally, consider another study. Uh, so, this is the first study. This is the second study. This is the third study. And uh, I want the fourth study. And in fourth study, we have. Mm, Uh, we have 100, uh, 100 participants. And a uh, sample sample mean uh, is again 140 and uh, sample variance is the same as in the first study. So uh, we have these kind of numbers, but we have much, much larger sample, not five people, but 100 people. And uh, all other properties of uh, our new sample here are the same as here. I mean, that we have the same sample mean, 140, and the same sample variance. So, numbers are deviated from the mean in the same way as here. Now, which research is more convincing? Again, if we, if we, if we are interested in the positive answer to this question, what data is more convincing? This data or all this new data? I think the Jewish is more convincing because of the, the sample is larger. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe it isn't large enough still. Okay, uh, I'm just uh, I'm not asking yet uh, what is large enough. My 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 current goal is to understand uh, which is more convincing and less convincing. So which factors which factors uh, affect um, the the amount at which these values are convincing to. Um, to, to convince us that uh, the answer is positive. So uh, we will discuss uh, how many numbers is enough, but now I'm just trying to understand what should I tweak, which, which, which parameters should I tweak to, uh, to change this, um, uh, these things. Okay, so this is again more convincing uh, the first study, and now this is due to your sample size. So, uh, to summarize uh, this series of examples, uh, when asking um, this question, we are interested in three parameters. 
Uh, first, we are interested in the difference between our sample mean and the value that we are trying to compare it with. Uh, so, this is important due to this second example. If this difference is larger, then the result is more cohesive. Okay. On the other hand, we are interested in, uh, in, in dispersion, in variance of uh, our values. If it is smaller, again, uh, the result becomes more convincing. And finally, we are interested in the sample size. If it is larger, the result become, becomes more convincing. Uh, all that we discussed so far is just a pure intuition. No statistical, no statistical facts needed to, 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 to discuss it in, in this way. But I just want to show that we are uh, we share the same intuition about these values and we understand the problem uh, uh, in the same way. So are there any, any questions so far? Okay. If I have to, to do something with the whiteboard to show something more close, just let me know. And I can be my own cameraman. It's a fun job to be a teacher because you have to be a, a basically um you have to uh, you, you have to do a lot of professions uh, at the same time okay so we can continue right okay if you on zoom please uh put plus if you can continue in chat okay okay I like pluses. So let us continue. Uh, now, uh, I, so my next step is the following: I keep the same, uh, I keep the same uh, problem statement, so the same research question and the same assumption here, but I want to formalize our intuition. And so let me let me remove everything. So formalization. And again, I assume that I have some large box. And uh, in this box, uh, I have a lot of balls. And I have a number on each ball. And uh, each number corresponds to a height of some person in St. Petersburg. So this is our population. Uh, and I mean St. Petersburg citizens. Or better to say St. Petersburg citizens have heights.
And uh, then um, I make a sample. So I do this sample major placement. And I have n, this is sample size. And let me denote these numbers uh, that I sampled uh, as x1, x2, and so on, xn. So this is actually our sample. And I have x bar, which is sample mean. I just find an average, sample average. And uh, here in population, I have uh, some unknown value, unknown population mean. So here I have population mean. Uh, let me use letter mu, Greek letter mu, uh, to denote this population mean. Uh, this is unknown. And uh, my question is the following. Uh, I'm interested in, uh, is it true that this mu is larger than 100, uh, 125. Uh, let me denote this value uh, as mu naught. So, so basically, I'm interested, is it true that mu is larger than mu? And uh, again, uh, like on the pre previous lesson, I have two hypotheses. I have uh, that uh, I have to compare. And uh, I have no hypothesis. Um, Basically, uh, what kind of results are, are not convincing for positive answer to this question? Uh, in which case, you are definitely will say that no, this result is not. They, that they do not provide do not provide evidence in favor of this uh, positive answer to this question. If mu would be uh, less than mm -hmm. uh, 125. Uh, yes, if uh, if our if our sample mean is less than this value, then we would say that no, we don't have this evidence. Basically, uh, I want to state this new hypothesis in terms of equality, not inequality, because it is more convenient for us uh, to proceed in this way. Uh, so, uh, so our new hypothesis uh, would be that people in Saint Petersburg are have the same average height as people in Moscow. This is our new hypothesis. So there is no difference between people uh, of Saint Petersburg and Moscow. Uh, basically, in most of cases, new hypothesis says that there is no difference between something and something. Uh, and we have an alternative. And an alternative is basically a positive answer to this question. Alternative is the statement that mu is larger than mu naught. And again, we have to choose uh, which reality to believe. The reality in which new hypothesis holds or reality in which alternative holds. And we have to analyze our data and decide uh, what to do. 
and we can uh, we can make uh, a choice of uh, again of two options either rejecting the hypothesis or not rejecting the hypothesis so uh, look at the data and either reject the hypothesis or not. Uh, okay, so now uh, my goal is to describe how would you make this decision. And uh, to do so, I have to uh, recall uh, some facts from the previous lesson from central limit theory. And um, actually, what is what is the idea? Uh, again, uh, all all this uh, reasoning in this statistical hypothesis testing goes in uh, the same in the same way. Uh, we start uh, we start by assuming that new hypothesis holds. It is, in a sense, a proof by contradiction. Do you remember proofs by contradiction from some geometry or algebra? In proof by contradiction, you first assume that something that you want to uh, prove is incorrect. And then you came to contradiction, and uh, thus you conclude that it was, in fact, correct. In, in this case, uh, we do in the same way. Uh, we want to prove this thing. We want to prove alternative. But we are, we are doing uh, a bit like uh, proof of, by contradiction, and we assume that alternative is not correct, but no hypothesis is correct. Uh, and in case uh, that no hypothesis is correct, uh, we, can, we can imagine um, we can imagine that we repeat our experiment many, 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 many times. We forget about our data for, for, for a moment about these particular numbers. And we are just trying to understand how the world in which this new hypothesis holds uh, can look like. Uh, particularly, uh, we are trying to understand what kind of results our experiment can have provided that new hypothesis holds. So, uh, assume that new hypothesis holds. Uh, assume we uh, repeated our study uh, a lot of times. Uh, each time uh, we have new X bar, new sample average. So uh, what do I mean that we repeat our experiment several times? I mean that we, we again uh, recruit the same number of people and we measure how, uh, how tall they are and we calculate, uh, we, we get this sample and we calculate this average. And we repeat it, uh, for example, 10,000 times. And uh, then we have uh, 10,000 values of this X bar. How are they distributed? What if I want to draw distribution, uh, distribution of this X bars, provided that new hypothesis holds? So now we believe that uh, this, uh, that here in population, 
people are on average uh, of the same height than in Moscow. So I believe that um, the population mean is 125. Uh, which values for X bar I can uh, I can obtain? Assume that I have some value of n like n equals to five. How do I think? So is it possible to obtain X bar that is equal to negative three? No. Um, which values you expect to, to obtain here? Yeah. The, close to the, uh, the uh, average in Moscow. Yes, close to the average in Moscow. So close to this numerator, close to this 125. So if I put 125 somewhere here, so I will get some values somewhere nearby. Right? And uh, how they will be distributed? What is the shape of histogram if I would draw this histogram? They will be distributed normally? More or less, yes. Uh, at least if n is very large, uh, I mean, 100 or more, they will be distributed normally. If it is small, it will be distributed not normally, but according to some other distribution. But uh, this distribution looks more or less like normal, at least geometrically. Let me draw some picture. So this is this is a theoretical distribution of x bars provided that look according to scopes so this uh, this curve is purely theoretical construction uh, it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't deal with the actual numbers that we obtained in our experiment in our real experiment this this values this these points and this curve are uh, is constructed by analyzing possible outcomes of this imaginary um, imaginary um, replications of our initial experiment not the, not our initial experiment itself uh, what should i do next assume that uh, my actually obtained value now we return to my real experiment my real numbers and uh, assume that my uh, real uh, uh, that uh, that my real experiment uh, gave me the sample uh, sample mean somewhere here assume that this is x bar observed this is the value that i actually observed in the experiment Uh, what would you say uh, if 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 my point is here? What would you say? Uh, is it a good e evidence to reject null hypothesis or not? Actually, if it is just one sample, maybe it isn't because we should repeat. Uh, no, you can't repeat. You have only uh, you have you have money only to uh, to collect one sample. Well, we'll see that it also depends on the variance of the sample. Uh, in fact, it is already already taken into account uh, in the shape of this curve. In fact, uh, the idea is the following: if you have large variations here, if you have uh, if you have very different different numbers here, then you have different numbers in your sample, very different. And in this case, uh, you have very different samples when you repeat this experiment, and you have rather different uh, averages. So, if uh, if your population has large standard deviation, 
uh, then this curve uh, will be a rather how to say it? okay uh, this this distribution of uh, averages will be also uh, will also has a large deviation and if you have small deviation then uh, this uh, this curve actually will be narrow so we already took into account it in fact so uh, my uh, okay uh, so it is not clear what to do with this as observed now but let us uh, assume for a moment that uh, I get not this as observed but But this x is zero. X bar of zero. What do you think in this case? It, it is more uh, likely to be something um, in the um, to the to the point of uh, hypothesis one because uh, like it is beyond the. Uh, our distribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the idea is the following. Uh, we have this theoretical distribution of this uh, of this uh, sample averages that holds if null hypothesis true, and we have our value. And if we see that this value, well, this this distribution suggests that if null hypothesis is true then with large probability we are somewhere here and if we are actually here this is just um, this is just too small probability this is just too unlikely to get this result if no hypothesis holds so this is uh, this is a strong evidence against no hypothesis so basically yes it is possible to obtain value here, even if no hypothesis holds, but probability of this event is too small, and in this case we reject no hypothesis. This is this is the idea. Again, it is possible. It is possible that people in Moscow are uh, on average uh, the same of the same height as people in Saint Petersburg, but. Just due, due to chance and due to pure chance in your study that was perfectly randomized, in your study you recruited only very, very tall people from this circle. Just but just by chance. All of them are basketball players. Just just this this is just a coincidence. And in this case, it is possible that you get this value, but you just don't believe in such a coincidence and you say no uh, if i choose in believing in such a small probability coincidence or rejecting null hypothesis i'd better reject null hypothesis i'd better believe that this is not this is not result of uh, a chance but this is some systematic effect that we see on this data so this is the idea And in fact, this is exactly what you do every time when you, when you make these decisions. Actually, when we discussed this before, we uh, on, on intuitive uh, level, basically what, what we do is uh, just application of this of this reason. So let us continue with formalization. Uh, So my decision rule is the following. Uh, decision rule. Uh, if 
X bar observed is larger than some X critical. Again, I have I have some threshold after which I will reject no hypothesis. If X observed is larger than X critical, uh, then reject no hypothesis. Reject no hypothesis in favor of our alternative. Uh, how to choose X critical? Does alpha have some relation to this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, this is basically this is a very similar thing uh, to the thing that we discussed uh, on the pre previous lesson when we discussed uh, when we discussed this coin tossing experiment. And basically, it seems to be a very different problem, but in fact, it is very similar because again, uh, you have some you have some result. You have some you have some difference between two numbers uh, between this uh, between this uh, x observed and the value that we are comparing it with and basically let me uh, let me make it this way let me subtract uh, this uh, value mu not uh, just to to make it a bit a bit more beautiful uh, so uh, we have this difference between uh, our sample mean and this value mean not and you can explain it either by some sampling error either by, by either by chance or by the fact that there is that there exists some some systematic difference that, that this is true and uh, you do it in the same way as previously so you have to introduce uh you have to introduce uh, some significant level uh, significant level and well, what is the condition um where the significance level is used We want uh, that probability that x bar minus mu naught is larger than x critical, provided that nu hypothesis holds. We want this probability to be less than alpha. Less than alpha. So. Uh, why I want why I want this condition to be satisfied? In this case, it's observed or it's bar inside it's bar of observed. Uh, well, uh, this uh, this x observed. Uh, uh, I think that we have some probability here. So basically, x bar observed uh, is not a random value; it is some concrete data. But uh, here uh, I write uh, just simple as observed, uh, well, yeah, just simple as bar result observed, because uh, this is uh, this is my imaginary. Uh, this is a value that is distributed according to this law. This is the result of my imaginary uh, imaginary experiments, imagine, imaginary replications of my experiment. So I write here like x observed. X bar. X, uh, sorry, uh, X bar, not zero. X bar. Uh, so why I want this probability to be less than or equal to alpha? This is related to type one and type two errors. Like uh, that uh, 
it would be a, 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 like an argument to reject hypothesis. Okay, well, we say that we reject the hypothesis if this condition is satisfied. And then we say that if no hypothesis holds true, then we so if no hypothesis holds true, then every time we reject it, we do error of which kind? Uh, type one. Type type one error. And I want the probability to make this type one error to be less than alpha. So every time uh, this thing is satisfied, I reject the hypothesis because this is my decision error. So this is this is why I want to control it in this way. Uh, now let me return to this picture. Uh, where should I put uh, X critical? Where should I put this threshold? How to choose this value? I'm not asking about the exact value. It is not possible to, to find it, but how to find it? Like when probability of X critical is equal to alpha. Uh, yes, probability. Uh, uh, basically, uh, let us look at this. Let us look at this curve. Uh, how to use this curve to answer this question about X critical? Again, uh, probabilities are areas under this curve. Probability to be in some segment is an area under uh, under the curve over this segment. Yeah, how to use it to choose uh, X critical? X critical should be uh, somewhere near to the end of the curve. Um, the problem is that this curve is infinite. Uh, it is it is uh, continued infinitely uh, to the right. Uh, but uh, the good uh, the good fact is that if I put uh, somewhere value, and uh, I find the uh, I find this area of this infinite. Uh, region area of this ray, this area will be finite. This is because this uh, is some probability distribution, and you can find this area for any segment on the line and even infinite segments. And uh, so, uh, if I look at this area, this area gives me a, this kind of probability probability that x bar is larger than something. Okay, I have uh, I just want uh, I just want this X critical to be difference uh, between basically I want this thing to be X critical. This difference, but probably it probably it makes uh, it, it is it makes that easier but more complicated. Let me uh, let me rewrite it in this way. So I'm interested in this number now. I'm interested in this point. And at this point is chosen in, in uh, the way such that this area is uh, equal to alpha. Let me, uh, let me redraw this picture once again, just to make it more clear. So we have the node here, and uh, we have some threshold here. Let me denote this by threshold. And I want to put this threshold, so this is X critical. And I want to put this threshold in a way uh, that this area is alpha. And this is x bar. 
and this is uh, distribution of m bar provided the two hypothesis calls. So if we are here, we reject no hypothesis. Uh, and here we do not reject no hypothesis. This is our are there any questions so far? Uh, note that the actual calculation of this threshold uh, is uh, it is not expected that you can do it by hand because you cannot uh, find the exact uh, the exact shape of this curve by hand, but computer can do it easily. So I just want that uh, this that it should be it should be clear how to find it, not not that you have to be able to do it by hands. Okay. And uh, another thing that uh, should be discussed is uh, again it is p value. So. Uh, again, we do the following thing. Uh, we we plot our actual exit door, x bar door, and then we find probability to obtain uh, this data or more strength. So uh, I put this x bar observed, and I find the probability to obtain even larger values of x bar. So p value of our data. This is probability that x bar is larger than x bar of zero, provided that no hypothesis is false. And now, what is our this? Uh, how how to write our decision rule? In terms of this uh, p value, for example, uh, assume that x observed is here. What can you say about p value and alpha? Assume that uh, this case, just like in the picture, uh, yeah. p value of uh, x observed is more, more than. No, in this case, p value is larger than alpha, and this exactly corresponds to the fact that x observed x bar observed is uh, to the left from this threshold. And in this case, we do not reject no hypothesis. And if we are here, if x bar observed is somewhere here, then uh, p value is less than alpha. And in this case, we reject no hypothesis. So, our decision rule can be restated in the following way. If p value is less than alpha, reject the hypothesis. In favor of alternative. And uh, this is what people usually do. People usually obtain data then put this data in the computer and computer give them p value and then they compare uh, this p value with alpha and if it is less than five percent uh they uh, they say wow cool they have significant result and if it is larger than five percent they say no nothing works Okay, uh, now I have four minutes before break and uh, I want to discuss uh, how the shape of this 
curve and uh, the related values that we uh, discuss now uh, depend on uh, the parameters that we discussed at the very beginning of today's uh, lecture. Because the more the, the largest variance, the uh, bigger is the uh, middle of the curve. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't discuss. So let me let me erase this thing. Uh, so uh, we have we have variance. So how variance affects our construction. Uh, assume that I have two cities and uh, in these cities uh, average height is the same but uh, dispersion uh, variance is different. And then uh, for each city, I do the same experiment. I take five people and find their uh, average height and repeat it a lot of times. And I have, and uh, I, I do the same thing for the second city. And uh, I plot distribution of my x bars. For these two cities, uh, average is the same. So they both will be distributed around the same the same point, but in one city, this distribution will look like this one, and in another city, this distribution will be like this one. Uh, in which city, variance is large? In the second, in this city. Note that I say variance of variance of heights of the city, but here it is drawn uh, averages. But anyway, uh, anyway, uh, if you have if your population has large variance, then your averages will also have large variance. And let us look uh, at how this will affect you know, our results. Assume that we, from, from two experiments, we obtained the same data. Uh, the same data, I mean, uh, the same X bar, but different, but we understand that there is a different variance. And let us look uh, on how it will be, how it will work here. So uh, I put the same X bar on zero, here and here. Uh, where p value is large in the first or in the second experiment? It seems that in the second, because the uh, height uh, of this, like not triangle, but the figure, mm -hmm. like it is is higher. Yeah, uh, just due to due to the fact that this figure is more wide, mm -hmm. is wider. Then uh, this area is larger than this area. Basically, here we have, we have a line that goes very close to the horizontal uh, horizontal axis. So uh, p value here, uh, p value two, experiment two, and here it is p value experiment one. And well, we see that this thing is larger than this thing. So variance two is larger than variance one. Okay, what about X critical? What about the critical level? Uh, assume that here, uh, this critical level is somewhere here. This is my threshold. 
Uh, where should I put it here on this picture? Um, uh, I think in the same place, like in the same distance from it, it's absorbed. Yeah, you mean somewhere here? Yeah, on, on my brain. Uh, yes, because we have, uh, we have uh, um, different uh, variations, but we still have um, uh, the, the same average. Average, yes, we have the same average. At uh, this point, uh, this point is the same as this point. Uh, yes, but uh, we choose we choose our threshold, uh, we choose our critical critical region in such a way that uh, this this area should be constant. But this picture is much wider than this picture. Uh -huh. So in the first picture, the constant is um, closer to x of the. Mm -hmm. so I think it it can be somewhere here. So oh, this is the threshold, right? Because this threshold also uh, give you the same the same probability here. Just because this picture is more narrow, and uh, to obtain the same probability, you have to move this threshold closer to to this point. Does make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, note that if you have uh, if you have data like like here, you see that uh, where you reject null hypothesis and where you don't reject null hypothesis. In which experiment you are reject null hypothesis and in which experiment you don't reject null hypothesis. Like in the first experiment, we will uh, reject it and mm -hmm. we will not because uh, we see that here x observed is um, like less than uh, threshold. threshold. Mm -hmm. And in the second, it is uh, like uh, the threshold isn't, um, doesn't have any yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, here the rejection region starts uh, starts here, and uh, you will reject if you are here, and your x bar zone is here, so it is in the rejection region. But for this picture, the same x observed is outside of the rejection region, just because the rejection region changed. And uh, you see from this analysis. That indeed you take into account uh, you take into account variance. Mm -hmm. Because the the smaller variance, the narrower in your figure, and uh, the smaller difference you need to reject all hypothesis. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if we talk not about uh, the variance. Uh, this is the population variance. If we talk not about the population variance, but about sample variance, we can just say that we can use sample variance as an approximation, as an estimate for population variance. So we we find we we get our sample, we find sample variance, and we say that if it is large then uh, probably our population has large variance. If, if it is small, probably our population also has, uh, has small variance. So the same logic can be applied. Also, basically the same picture uh, demonstrate, uh, demonstrates how sample size affects our logic. Because what happens with this picture if we increase sample size? What happens with the distribution of averages? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it becomes uh, it becomes more close to which feature, uh, top one or bottom one? Top one. 
the top one, yes. Uh, if if I have uh, if if I have n large, uh, if I have n large, then uh, it becomes more like this picture. So again, it works in the same way. If I have larger or uh, larger sample size, I have more concentrated uh, possible uh, possible sample sample means and uh, I need smaller difference between observed value and the value with which I compare to reject of the particles. So this this corresponds to our intuition perfectly. And finally of course uh, this this difference is what we are interested in because if this difference is large then they are more probable to be more likely to be in this uh, projection region. So all three, all three values that we found just, just from our intuition, all of them work here and just according to our intuition. So everything, everything is, is good. Nothing counterintuitive here. And uh, I think it is a good time to make a 10 minutes break. And after the break, we begin our uh, exercises practical session. Okay. If you have any question, you can ask them just now. Okay. Hey, first of all, uh, so you say that we can take the sample as the number of strength of population. Right? Mm -hmm. It seems like uh, if uh, the sample size is quite large, then we can say that it is small. Then. Yes, this is because uh, th th this is why, in fact, people use not normal distribution here, but uh, students' key distribution. Um, and in this key distribution, you have slightly heavier things that account for the effect that you are talking about. Yes, we can. We can uh, we can uh, we can underestimate population variance, and due to this fact, we can have problems here. But at least under under assumptions of normality of your distribution, this works well with students' details. In fact, what I discussed here to be uh, to be completely. Uh, to be completely honest, uh, everything that I discussed here is not actually a t-test, but it is more close to z-test. We, we didn't use uh, t-distribution, at least in these pictures, but we used normal distribution. But to take into account what you are talking about, uh, people use t-test and t-distribution. Yeah. More questions? Yes? Uh, maybe I just run to 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 work but uh, uh, is there any science field to which is significance level 10 percent but not higher because like i saw ten, ten. Some, yes 10 percent because i saw something in r uh, gives you uh, yes they draw thing. they draw they draw dots uh yeah uh, uh, i don't know i think actually people now discuss that you have that we, we we probably have to replace five percent with with uh, older five percent. So I don't think that uh, uh, ten percent is a reasonable uh, significance level in any case. But yes, it, it reports some somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay, more questions. Okay, ten minutes break, and we continue in. In fifty minutes, ninety fifty. So, if you are in Zoom and you have questions, you can also ask them now.
Okay. Uh, so just a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, and uh, I just want to show something uh, about uh, the so-called T statistics uh, that is used uh, in calculations. And uh, let me recall uh, that uh, on the previous lesson we discussed uh, the statistics. And this work. Uh, so we discussed that there is that value that statistics uh, that works like uh, x bar minus nu divided by uh, standard deviation of population times square root of n. Uh, this is this is uh, z value the, the statistics and uh, it is distributed according to so called standard normal distribution. So this is normal distribution with uh, average zero and standard deviation one. So this is zero and here standard deviation is one. And uh, the problem is that if you have if you have a sample, you cannot find these statistics. Why? Yes, we don't know standard deviation of population. Uh, we know x bar. This is uh, this is our sample mean. Uh, if we assume that nu hypothesis is false, then we know this nu. We assume that under the null hypothesis, mu equals to mu naught. Okay, let me put here mu naught. And we know uh, sample size. The only thing that we don't know is standard deviation of our population. And instead of standard deviation of population, uh, people put uh, standard deviation of uh, sample. And uh, then uh, we create uh, the value that is called t statistics. And it works like this. So so here is uh, here x is sample. Uh, this is uh, sample standard deviation. Uh, I put here a plus uh, because uh, when you calculate variance, uh, you divide not by n but by n minus one. Uh, so this is uh, this is adjustment, and this adjusted sample standard deviation is denoted usually by this this plus. And this thing is distributed not according to just standard standard normal law. But it is uh, distributed according to so called t distribution. And uh, this t distribution is just slightly, it has slightly more, more hairy tails. But geometrically, it is very close to the normal distribution. So this is t distribution. Uh, but uh, I don't want to discuss this t distribution in details. I want to uh, look at uh, this formula and uh, uh, and see that it takes into account exactly all the factors that we discussed at the beginning of the lecture. Uh, it takes into account this difference between observed x bar and uh, our mu naught. 
Uh, and the larger the difference, the larger T, T statistics, the more we have evidence against null hypothesis. Uh, the more to, to the right we are. And uh, also we have this square root of n. Again, the, the more data we have, the larger sample size, the larger T statistics, because we, we multiply it by square root of n. And on the other hand, uh, if we have large standard deviation, then this value decreases because it is in the denominator. So large standard deviation is bad for us. It, it decreases our T statistics, and uh, it means that we have less evidence against new hypothesis. So everything is included. And everything is in agreement with our intuition. Uh, actually, we, we, we usually don't need these two statistics, but I have two reasons uh, to uh, discuss it now. Uh, first, it is reported by R, and you ask, uh, what is it anyway? And second, uh, sometimes it is. Uh, yeah, it, it seems to be appropriate to report this number in papers. So, if you do test, if you do t-test in your research, and you want to write about it in the paper, then you report not only sample size, but you also report not only p-value, but you also report this t statistics usually. And this is this is why I wrote this formula in the first place. So that's all. Now, now let us uh, let us turn. To